We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time now to go to the press and see what made it to the headlines uh, or, or to the front pages rather, what headlines made it to the front pages of our newspaper. We're taking just three newspapers today, uh, The Punch, uh, The Guardian and The Nation newspaper to x-ray some of these headlines. Uh, we're being joined by architect Ezekiel Nyaito, public affairs analyst at Kwaibom State. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and thanks for having me. Just that today I'm in Abuja. Yeah, we know that. We can notice that. And then <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also know that you are in Abuja because of your court case, which uh, unfortunately we hear, we hear has been struck out for lack of merit. Tell us a little bit about that before we go to the papers. It might not be on the papers. Okay. Um, I, I think at the end of this whole process, I owe this nation to write a book because there are very many things that uh, people don't know as they get into politics. Uh, we know that at the end of... Um, the elections, if you are aggrieved, you can go to the tribunal. But we don't know that there are certain cases that the tribunal cannot superintend over. It's only at the Supreme, at the appeal court. So certain cases that are thrown away at the tribunal, you think it's over. It's not over. It's just that the matters that you presented, I had a very, very clear, you know, direction on what I was talking about number one convict who is a convict and how liable is the person to um contest an election number two exactly what is double nomination and then of course number three i needed my votes you know i call them sacred votes and i had the reason why i call them sacred votes you know when you when you election is a process but there's a mindset that we have as Nigerians. You, you bring a party, you want to see how well that party does, so that maybe in the next cycle, you gain more people, not necessarily for yourself, but for your party, because party is not just that you know, instrument you use to get power. It, it, it's an ideology that you build and you project with time. So that 10 votes, that 50 votes, that 50,000 votes that you get, it's important that INEC allows you to have them. But we have this mindset that, you know, have the big party, small party. If you notice, how will a presidential candidate score 4,000 votes? We know it's not possible. It's not possible. It's just not possible. You know, because these are people who paid money. There are things that have happened during that process. And Nigerians need to understand. And INEC, in particular, needs to know what it is there for. It's not there to elect a president, elect a governor. No, it's there to set a system and a structure that has processes that must be followed such that there is a progression in being refined and a progression in participation and a progression in people appreciation. These are the dynamics that we are losing. That is round one. Because of my three uh, counts, out of the three, the tribunal could only take effectively one of them. And even that one of them, they dismissed my case so that I had to go to appeal court where I won and came back to the tribunal. By the time I came back to the tribunal, I was given about five days to do what people use about 30, uh, about two months to do. At the end of the day, obviously, we couldn't do, uh, um, okay, you want to like go in to check your vote. The way that I make, and I challenge every Nigerian to go and look at it, the way that the ballot boxes are put, it will take you a minimum of two weeks to sort out the ballot boxes according to local government, according to wards, according to polling units, before you can start to look at your vote. And when you have two days to do that, what are you going to do? So at the end of the day, they say, oh, you didn't have witnesses to prove this. How can you have witnesses to prove in five days when you have things that you should have done in two months? 
to be done in that period. Luckily, there is a phase two, which is the appeal. And you find a situation where, like in my case, I could say some of these things now because, I mean, we're about to start a new process. So right now you can't say it is, um, you know, you are talking what should be or what should not be talked. You have a process where, for instance, you file a case. The case is supposed to be determined from the day they give the judgment to your case out dismissed to the day they give the final judgment will be within 60 days. Immediately they do that because we were extremely proactive, extremely, extremely proactive. I had the set of the most brilliant set of lawyers, committed, passionate, you know. So as soon as that was done, within two days we had filed, you know, an appeal. Brother, that appeal stayed in Calabar for over 40 days without our getting a date. That is why sometimes when people bash the judiciary, I can't have the mouth to open and say certain things about because the judiciary has done to me what Napoleon Bonaparte could not do. Okay? And there are people there that can... I can say are incorruptible. They don't care about money. That's why everybody is so abashed as how did Nyaito move the case from Calabar to Abuja and within days get a hearing and everything and get a judgment. It was like it's impossible unless you have moved over two, three billion. But I want to say here that the judiciary, while some of them have made us feel very sick, and sad, they are still women and men of integrity mm. who believe that the right thing should be done. Okay, so you can see that all these processes and understandings, it means that if you are a lawyer and you are representing anybody, number one, know about the times, the timelines, you must understand that. When you file a case, put pressure on them and say, time is going, keep it on record. So time is going, so time is going, write them over and over and over. When you go on appeal, it will form part of your evidence that the fault was not from you. Then we now go to the next part, which is where the fault is from the institution. To what extent is a candidate held liable for what is not his own making when he starts to do counting of days? This is called justice and not just judgment. You know, so the process are a lot. You know, we'll be able, like I said, when I sit down to document the things, uh, I think it will be good for Nigerians. Now, INEC trying to do the peer review and all those, they shouldn't bother. Let them wait until when the whole processes are through at the Supreme Court. And number three, you know, the difference between INEC and the court is that INEC is mathematical. Two plus two is four, anywhere you go in the world. 10 times 10 is 100. It's just like that. INEC is about figures. It's about exactness. It's like science. But the judiciary is, is like history. It's like literature. You know, it's subject to interpretations and everything. So INEC should know that they are not there for storytelling. They are there to make sure that votes are counted, votes are published the way they are, and even the Beavers concept, when I get to tell you about the Beavers, it's another story altogether. Beavers is one of the best things that has been introduced to our electoral process. But INEC is deliberately, intentionally, you know, let me use a hard word, frustrating the process. Mm. And there are certain things I'm going to bring to the nation and I'm going to ask INEC and they must do it that way because the nation will agree with me that that's the best thing to do. Okay. When you finish voting, you, 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 you sort, you know, according to the different parties and their vote openly. After sorting, by the time you take the first person, AA, and you count, and they have three, don't record it on a piece of paper. Record it there and then in front of everybody. It takes you just 10 seconds. AA, one, two, three. So AA is three, right? Right. Agents are there. You bring the part, you read three. A 
ADC, you count, 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 85. You record it there and then in front of everybody. You go to PDP, you go to APC, whatever are the votes, you record them as the people have seen you count, record them there and then. That okay. will tally because as you are counting, you are recording. Okay. But you know what they do? They don't do that. <laughs> All right. They finish counting and write it on a piece of paper. Then they go inside. And really when they go recording. inside, they will say, ADC agent, a small guy, say, you know what? You know your guy is not going anywhere, so don't waste your time. You know, how many votes did he have? 28. Okay, we'll give you a thousand per vote. Guy will say, no, give me two thousand. No, no, they will agree. Do you understand me? Maybe they will agree at maybe 35,000. When they give him that, still, that. Does that still work that way? Anyway, well, <laughs> that's how it works now. I, I think we will. We will have to have a program on these and talk about these. Uh, maybe plus politics because we have that program. We've taken the time for a newspaper review to do this, but we needed <laughs> to have an insight. To, yeah, we you needed to have an insight review. to so what has happened. Yes, we wrote our own newspaper today and uh, formed the headline. <laughs> okay, but we, let's go to something else that you're passionate about, and that is yes. in every uh, newspaper today talking about labor. Uh, labor is spoiling for a fight, a very, very serious fight. Like um, uh, Jonah would say, in, in five days, in our own case it is, in five days, uh, the murder of all strike, according to NLC and TUC, is going to happen. But federal government is saying there should be a meeting on, uh, on uh, we have to, there will be a meeting on Tuesday, that same Tuesday that the strike is supposed to, to happen. So Labour faults federal government's meeting insists on indefinite strike. And the riders are that any fresh meeting won't stop us. That's what uh, Labour is saying. It is going to be a murder of all strikes, uh, Labour union vow. Federal government says new meeting date will be announced. TUC asks government to account for subsidy removal uh, savings. So Labour is saying no matter what the federal government says, there's going to be murder of all strikes. Let's get your comments on that. You're a Labour man. I feel very, um, let me use the right word, sad. feel very, very sad that we have government where they don't understand the essence of them being in power in office. We have government where they really don't feel accountable to the people. We have government where rather than being those that work for the people, they believe they have bought the people, and as a result, the people should just keep quiet. And when you look at several things, they just don't add up. There's something about this administration that I really am trying hard to understand what is going on, you know? Come to the specific issue, you would realize that this matter started several months back. It ended in the warning strike by NLC. During this period, our president went to, I think it was India, then he came back, he went to Onga, and to the best of my knowledge, I don't know he's, he's back in the country, but I know that the, the, the program ended about, um, about four or five days ago. So when, when you go out to woo investors, the world has become a global village. And these people know that things are not going well at home. I want to ask, except you are a corn man, who is that person that is going to go to invest in a country where all the indices are going south? Look at the Naira. Look at labor. Now you, you, you want to make labor feel so small that in spite of the meeting that they've had with Mr. President directly, they've had meetings with the minister and the minister of state together, They've had meetings with the Senate president. They've had meetings with the House of Reps, I believe. I'm, I'm, I know very well of that of the Senate president. And each of them says, I'll, I'll talk with the boss, you know, 
The minister says, when the boss comes back, we'll talk with him. And today, if the boss travels, I think that there's a reason why we have a vice president. Outside of that, technology makes sure it's like in my office. In my office, I can fire you for just making one statement. Sir, you were not around. I can fire you for making... Nobody in my office makes that statement. Sir, you were not around. The reason is that I am available 247 for anything that is important in my office via technology. If you can't get me, if it's not good to talk to me on, uh, on, um, on phone, I need to see it, we go on Zoom. You will go on, there are several platforms that we've set up. So I am constantly available. I can see you. I can see the, uh, I'm into real estate. I can see the foundation. I can see the issues. I can see everything. So I can take a decision on that site while I'm out there in China. So don't tell me, sir, I was waiting for you to come back. Come back and do what? So that you can see my eyes when you, can't you see me on video? Anyway, what am I trying to say? Sir, Oga was not around. It's not tenable. Um, I'll see your guy this evening and get back to you people. And he just announced, Labour announced two days ago that on the 3rd of October, they'll be going on indefinite strike. And what do you tell them? Okay, we'll have a meeting on the 3rd of October. I mean, that is just, that is just disingenuous. That is just provocative. I mean, I would have expected Labour, I know that this is weekend, but please, Let's forget about weekend and trash out these issues. This is an emergency. If we cannot finish on Saturday, let us continue on Sunday. Okay? For those of you that are Christians, please go for first service as you can. Let us meet by, 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 by 12 noon as much as you can. Beg God to allow you because before Monday morning, we must resolve this issue. And on the 1st of October, which is the, the Monday, the president will announce that they have had an understanding and agreement with labor and that um, the nation will not be allowed to grind to a halt. And this, uh, what are you doing between now and then? The Senate president has stopped with labor. The minister and the minister of state, they've stopped with labor. No, everybody has stopped. So they know the, the demands of labor. Is it that you want central bank governor to now take office and now tell you how much money you have? Did you mean in the absence of central bank governor, the acting person did not have access and information? What is he going to have that was not there before now? What is going to that thing that you need for the next three days that you don't have today? I think we should make sure that labor does not go on strike. Uh, well, we should make sure well, we, uh, we 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 Yes. First October is on Sunday, as I, I know, about the public yeah. holidays on Monday. So maybe yeah. maybe the plan is for the president yeah. to just announce all those things, demands of uh, of labor on the first of October. And the, um, more the, federal, government, the, the federal government is the saying more that reason why the meeting should have been yesterday. Mm. Think about it. Well, the more reason why the meeting should have been yesterday, all through the night till this morning. The more reason why they should have reached out to women and men of, of, of integrity, of honor, of character that can say labor, let's look at what's your story, this one, what's your story, that can mediate between, because they, the level of distrust between labor and government is like, you know, you know, two can play. Mm. Each person is coming and they are hiding one hand behind, you know, behind them and they are telling, oh, no problem, my two hands are on the table. Each person knows that it's just one hand. The other hand is at the back. But they are looking at each other because it's like, you can play. Yeah, you want to play me? I can play you. You understand me? So we need, by today, there would have been a group of eminent Nigerians that could have, and we have them. The Emeka and Yokus of this world, even if he needed for us to call Okunja well and say, Madam, please come back. Adeshina, please come back. Madam Amina, please come back. A group of five will come and say, Mr. President, enough is enough. Labor, I beg, there's no money. Okonjai Wala will say, you know, I was a CME, I understand the situation. Please, I beg you, we beg you, just cool down. Government, look, stop that grandstanding. You are going to Ongar, you are going to this, you are going to that. All those things are not important. There's, they say fire, they burn house, you they pursue rat for bush. All those things are useless unless your, your home is stable. 
you know, so that there will be these people that are appealing to labor and, and also talking to, you know, when you caution the hawks, you've got to also caution the chicks. You understand me? Because the chicks are busy parading themselves and making themselves very, very attractive to the hawks. And when the hawks speak, they say, ah, why be there? You, you know, each person needs to know they, they need to put this country first. They have to put Nigeria first. So I, I, I really pray that something happens. Nigeria is a country that um, God has a way of intervening at zero hour for us. But if labor goes on this strike, I know my name is Ezekiel and I hate to be a prophet of doom. It will go on a slide that the president will, 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 will regret ever not taking action before time. I know how things are. Yesterday, I was, you know, I, I had this building that I had left for almost 10 years. I was facing others, and several families were living in them. Several, several families in Jabi. And then um, uh, after election, I needed to get, you know, some, some funds, man. So I decided to come for us to finish developing the place so that I can, you know, make some money from it. And I cried. To get those people out, they were willing to leave. They were, in fact, they were living already, but the children have lived in that house for over five years. The parents were looking for where to go. They, they was, they was, they was, you know, I don't even know how to put it. And I had interactions with them. And they were telling me the cost of a cup of gari, one cup of gari, one mudu of rice. And I just asked, so how do you live? And they started crying. Women were crying. Not because of sending them out. It's like you have no idea what we go through. And then our leaders just don't understand this. Our leaders are living in the high horse. And they are living on the resources of the people. I can understand the hotel dollars, the dangotes, the udomas, who are professionals who are making their money. But how do I understand that the government, National Assembly, they are living large on the resources of the people that they are supposed to serve. There's something fundamentally wrong. I woke up from three o'clock this morning. I couldn't go. To, I couldn't sleep again from three o'clock. I've been awake till now. I just couldn't sleep. I started writing and writing and writing. Not about the election. Not about tribunal. No, no, no. It's just about a topic came to my head. The elections. The essence and the office of the citizen. Do you understand me? Election in Nigeria, what is the essence of election? What is the essence? You know, it's, it's, it's a discourse I want to bring to national discourse because there's a major disconnect. And when you read that right up, you know why God woke me up by 3 a.m. There's something fundamentally wrong that we must. Elections are decided by who? People in the village who have no understanding, who have been impoverished, by people in the village, what sort of governance system should we run? Is democracy really good for us? We need to have a national dialogue on these things because so long as our leadership recruitment criteria is not fundamentally right, we will never get it right. That's why as blessed as we are intellectually, natural resource-wise, we have become terribly the, the, and, 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 and ashamedly the poverty capital of the world. And we, we we are now saying we are the, the sixth, you know, uh, what, what's, what's the word in terms of, um, in one of the papers, you know, talking about, um, you know, these uh, bad boys and all those things that we are, initially we were top three in terrorized nations, now the small arms and everything, we're we are just taking the lead in all the bad sides of developmental indices. We can continue this way. You know, this way. Let's go to another headline that we have here. Um, that headline is from IMF. IMF is still on the punch newspaper. IMF is saying stop tax waivers. Uh, they're telling Nigerians to, Nigeria to stop tax waivers. So how do you feel about that? No more tax waivers according to the advice of IMF. You know, you know if I had my way, uh, I will shut down and shut out Nigeria effectively for about two, three years. 
You can't advise me except you know my peculiar circumstance and situation. You can't make such blanket statements. If anything, I expected IMF to say, Nigeria, the MSMEs, micro, small, and medium scale industries, that's your future. Please go down. Not only do you give them tax waivers, you are going to give them tax holidays, you are going to give them everything that you possibly can to incubate them, to, to stimulate that local economy, for you to help them to be able to, to grow that. That is your future. They can now sell them behind and say, all these other big countries, the companies that are just... Uh, you know, not not really contributing much, even if anything, they are, they are, they are, I hope you're hearing me. Can you hear me? Oh, God. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So, they should say, draw two lines. The big companies, the small companies. Concentrate in the next two years on the small companies. I went to register a company, you know, uh, in, in Rwanda, an African, you know, version of what we're doing here in Nigeria, tech and everything. And when we went, they gave us a console and within 30 minutes, we had done the registration and we asked them how much and they sound, you know, the, the man looked at me and said, you know, if you have a cow and you keep taking the milk from this cow, a time comes when you can hardly have any milk to take from the cow. But if you now go ahead and feed this cow and get it fatted, when you start to take the milk, the quality and quantity of milk that you get will be something else and to be for a long time. As you're coming to register a company, it is for us to know, see how we can help you to make sure that you come you register that company we give you all that the backings that we need for it to be you know successful especially when it has to do with tech and then based on the support system we have given you by the time that you start to make profit you we won't even be the ones to tell you to pay taxes and this because you have a sense a heart of gratitude and then you will also be making a lot so that's a wiser thinking and approach and i said god have mercy in nigeria for you to register a company you gotta pay and pay and pay and pay the next thing is tax 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 next thing they don't even know what incentive do they give you for you to become you know, you know to know nigeria helped me to get to where i am today and then imf is saying maybe they are talking about the big companies but that's not a problem imf should say how can i come to you know kind of um you know uh, uh, instigate inspire activate your local economy on account of the msmes what can we do now this imf we need to be very careful with them we need to be, they don't love you more than we love ourselves they don't love you more than we love ourselves we must show that we are we are not we are not children this beggarly attitude that we have towards these developed nations it, it is wrong. They shouldn't come to us with this 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 tokenism. It's it, it. We need a leader that is going to be very audacious and going to be very bold and is going to be very honest and is going to like take hard decisions. I listened to an interview by uh, Lee Kuan Yew, and and I think every Nigerian should go and listen to that guy. You know, because. A time came when he said, leave those guys alone. Shut down and shut out. And then come inside. Introspect. Harness your resources inside. Only your people can help you. Outsiders will only exploit you and pretend to be helping you. So I, I am not a fan of IMF. I'm sorry to say I'm not. Um, let's also go to the Guardian newspaper now. Uh, there are some headlines there, but I'd like to uh, first begin with uh, Ondo State, what is happening. Ondo lawmakers shun court order, move to impeach deputy governor. These things are happening. You go to Edo State, it's happening in uh, uh, the Guardian newspaper now. Uh, you go to Edo State, it's happening. You go to Ondo State, it's happening. And I just wonder, 
Now the deputy is about to be impeached by Ondo lawmakers. In fact, yesterday we saw a story where a group was protesting and saying that the national or the state assembly must do their work and if they find this person guilty, they should remove the person. It looks like it, it, looked like it was sponsored and all that. And I don't know what is really happening here. Deputy governors are just weeping sticks or something. Comment on what uh, is happening on those yes, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it is. Somebody, anyway, let me not go to the background. Let's just face the undo. You know, our our president, when he was um, when he was the governor of Lagos State, we forget a little too soon that he had about three deputy governors, you know, <laughs> and um, the relationship was not good at all. Um, but I, I am happy to say that they are still, well, it's still early in the day yet, you know, because like in, in our state, there's a very good and cordial relationship between the governor and the deputy governor. But you see, it's still, um, in fact, they never even start yet, you know. And besides, who knows how it will be tomorrow, you know. The governor and I were very good friends, buddies, and we just keep saying one thing. Let the will of God be done. Whatever is the will of God, that's what we prefer. But coming back to the issues, the state, the House of Assembly needs to know that there is three arms of government and there's a reason for that. There is the executive where the governor is and the deputy governor. There is the legislature, which is the House of Assembly. And there's the judiciary. If the judiciary makes any pronouncement, you don't have any option but to obey. You can appeal. Luckily, the state governments have learned how to, you know, have a good relationship with their judge, chief judge and their everything. You see, so the, the judiciary also have to understand that they don't, they need to be careful not to embarrass themselves the way they do sometimes. Do you know you cannot have a successful impeachment without the chief judge setting up a panel to investigate? Now, chief judge, assuming that your judge or judiciary has made a pronouncement to the end that this will should continue, should not continue, and then they flout that and continue and then bring them to you will you what will you tell them will you tell them to go back and obey the court quickly bring an appeal to me i can help you guys so that you vacate that and then continue the process or will you in spite of what your people have said now kotow to the governor's uh whims and caprices depending on who Hello, and you. where how or will you do the right thing if the legislature know that the executive will stick to their own and will not constitute the panel that will look into the petition, then they won't even bother. But when within the judiciary there's discordant tunes, this one is going this way, this one going as it is in the tribunal, I mean, the judiciary need to wake up uh, as much as I was praising them at the beginning, which is a fact anyway, they also need to put their house in order, put their acts together and make sure that they are careful to do, to follow their own, you know, the terms of reference and codes of practice. When that is done, then you don't need to talk to national, the house of assembly, they cannot impeach. Impeachment is a process, which means number one, you are going to compile the cases against this man. Number two, you are going to call him and make him to account for all those things. Number three, you are going to like take it up to a panel that is set. It is that panel, only a judicial, a properly constituted judicial uh, uh, panel can pronounce somebody guilty and then pass the judgment. It's in the hands of the judiciary. So judiciary, if you want to be divided against yourself, you know, those that it's up to you. And I don't think that anybody is interfering in others. Judiciary says, this man has come to me to give a reason why he should stay execution, so he should stay. So you should go ahead and, you know, appeal and then vacate that stay and then continue your process. And then all will be well. So all this matter of placard and this and that is because there's a shortage of understanding of processes and procedures. And there is this flaunting of even the processes. And then there's this impunity 
particularly by the executive. So everybody is turning the whole situation into either a circus or a jungle, and that it shouldn't be so. Headline here. Um, yesterday we were talking about the fact that um, uh, more companies may fold up even when the president and the vice president are globetrotting, trying to woo investors into the country. But more companies might fold up because of diesel price, which is now at about 1,100 naira. But the headline here on, on the Guardian is saying diesel may trade near 1,500 naira as oil prices uh, spike, which means this uh, day of doom of uh, uh, companies folding up might even come earlier than expected. I'd like to have your comments. 1,500 naira is quite yeah, much. You see, there's a, there's a certain contradiction that I can't seem to align. When the oil prices go up, we should be celebrating as a nation that more resources are going to come to us. At the same time, we do not refine our crude as a result we are on the other hand having palpitations that we are going to be like um, importing these refined products at a very very high rate you know uh because of the exchange rate and things like that and then the, the price of in fact it, there's a contradiction somewhere this is a lack of clarity because if if how are we are we selling our oil or are we trading a butter system exactly what are we doing so that we will get to understand that if the if the oil uh, prices in the oil market goes up then we now say okay we are going to have a, a, a butter system so whether the price goes up or goes down is irrelevant is inconsequential because i've given you 20 barrels to give me 1,000 liters, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just using words because I really don't know what the exact, um, you know, ex yeah. exchanges are for a barrel and then the quantity of uh, the liters. So, but I'm just using a hypothetical barrels of oil to give me of oil. The price of the barrel of oil becomes insignificant. So whether it is going up to 20, to 50, to 100, it doesn't matter. It's a direct, it's a butter system. If, on the other hand, I'm selling to you, it means that the refined products are going to come up more expensive. And because I am selling at a higher price, I'm making more money. On account of my making more money, I'll now be able to give a lot more internal support because I will tell the people, while you are buying the petrol or the diesel as a thousand five, companies, I have made a lot more money. So I'm going to give you this sweetness. I'm going to give you this tax holiday. I'm going to, for the number of people that we employ, which are put on our board and we know that this is it, I will be able to give you a support system. It, what I'm effectively saying is that I'm going to do an indirect subsidy or generality of Nigerians. Now we can do add another uh, rail link from, from this place to the other place as opposed to the you know the first two that we're going to have we have more money we're going to have. that transparency and accountability is like winston churchill said hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul we'll know that as much as we are paying more we are also going to get a lot more sweetness that at the end of the day is going to be a balanced out effect and we now ask ourselves, you see, there's an area that has been very opaque, and I've said this, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record. How do we show up the Naira? The concept of supply and demand is so basic that me, as an architect, I know it. Why is the value of the Naira going down on a daily basis? Because of the pressure on the dollar. How can we get more dollars in? Number one, all citizens that are abroad, why are they not giving us the dollar? Because Central Bank tells you that we will collect it from you at 700. And then I know that I can sell it at the parallel market at 1,000. It doesn't make sense for me to bring it to you at the market. It doesn't make sense. But if it is marginal, I would rather deal with Central Bank than with the parallel market. So why don't we create that window? 
that says, look, you know what the prior market is. They know. They say, send it to us. All we are doing is taking 5% commission and that's it. And we'll give you at the going rate. Do you understand me? So you bring in a lot. People, that little commission helps you, you know, on one hand. Number two, when they started saying that, oh, they've opened up our link with um, Dubai and everybody was um, uh, celebrating, I was sweating. Why? Dubai is one of the places that puts so much pressure on our foreign exchange to go and buy and buy and buy, to go for holiday, to send the children, everything like mopping up dollars, buying, 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 buying dollars. Do you understand me? So when, when, that, when that route was closed temporarily, I mean, I was happy because I said, ah, we go cool down small. So of these things that we're buying from Dubai, can we not produce them here? It might not be the best, but with time will improve. Number three, apart from those two, governors are stealing money in dollars. We need to know this. Politicians, the tribunals, they are paying in dollars. Nobody's carrying Naira again. Nobody's doing transfers again. You know? I don't want ESC to come and call me to come and prove because if they will do it, if they ever try such a thing, the court of justice will visit them because I'm not saying something that they don't know. You understand me? So the pressure on the dollars is so much. How can we lessen? And above all, if we stop it from going, how can we get more? One of the ways that you get more is very simple. Can we not? I've said this and I'm getting, I, I won't get tired of saying it. Why can't Mr. President ensure that there is a, 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 a um, what, what's the word, a, 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 on the top or ahead of every oil that is drilled? There's a metering system, that's it. So that you know, you sit in your office and you know the quantity of oil that is pumped on a daily basis. And if you have pumped this, I put the responsibility on you, even if it means you taking a percentage of this to secure, you know, the transit between the oil head and the tank where you deposit for me. I don't mind giving you, I put you under that responsibility. You know, there's a company called Tantita that is doing a lot of work today. How do we kind of empower such companies to make sure that the safety, when that is done, then we will now have more crude to sell and when we have more crude to sell, we'll make a lot more money. Coming to tell me that we lose about 400,000 barrels per day to oil theft is unacceptable that I seated here, I know what to do. I've said this before. Let the president call me. I will tell him what to do. If he has the political will. One of the sweetest things that I heard was when I had a meeting with the current minister for housing. And he made one statement. That statement just blew me well. He said, our president has a political will for housing development in Nigeria to take its rightful place. As soon as he said that, he didn't know that he had won me completely. I detached myself from all this housing thing, blah, blah. I'm getting old. November when I'll be 60. I've carried it for over 30 years. Let the younger ones also. But once he said that, I was inspired again. I moved on. So let the president have the political will in this oil sector. I'm told through the uh, grapevines that a man like El Rufai, the reason he was left out was because people were afraid of him coming to power or energy. Look at what Wike is doing. I like the guy. I may not like his method, but man, I like the guy. And Nigerians need people like, like Wike, like El Rufai. I have some issues with El Rufai myself, but guy, put that guy in power, result will come out. Okay. Put that guy in power, result go come out. Right. So if Mr. President, you are being blackmailed, you are being people are saying he's this and that and that, you know, try him out because you want to succeed. Mm. So that's, that's, the issue of um companies, I can tell you that I know the weight that we are under being an employer of labor myself okay. and running systems. You know, I'm not even into production that needs a lot of diesel. So some of us have moved into solar. And we have learned to use this um, generator that um, takes, um, you know, nice. this small, uh, well, big petrol generator okay. that takes, uh, uses petrol, but carries up to three ACs. If you come to my place, you see several of them. So I've had to rewire my lines <laughs> such that a gas office will get AC. Or a hand. 
then maybe one or two other places. Do you get the point? The other ones, we have low energy, energy serving bulb. And you know, as right. uh, hunters have learned to shoot without missing, we, the elegant bars, we have learned to fly without perching. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, free consultancy for big companies. Yes. Rewire or whatever, use solar and small generators and combine. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll take a final question uh, from a final headline from the Nation newspaper. Uh, we'll just uh, be as brief as possible. INEC, insecurity threatens November 11 governorship polls. And I was particularly interested in the rider there. It says, youths unwilling to work in ad hoc uh, capacity says uh, uh, resident commissioner. So right now, youths are not happy or they are not uh, uh, willing to work as ad hoc staff. So insecurity, they were complaining a few days ago that the insecurity in Imo and Kogi, the states that are going to have this off-season election in November, is worrisome for them. And now they have come with another one that youths are not uh, ready to take up ad hoc capacity. Let me hear your thoughts as we wrap up. apples and oranges. The issues are very, very different. The issues of insecurity is one, very, very clearly so. Now, there is the other issue of them having this ad hoc staff and there being complaints that they are not paid, either they are not paid on time or they are not paid what is commensurate, what is agreed. You know, these youths, they've learned to get to the bottom line and know the exact figures. But for you to tell me, you see, youths are willing to even do work for half a day and get some money. I can tell you that. Because if INEC explains the volume of people that are needed for election, those people cannot be retained as full-time staff. They can't. They can't. It's not possible. So it's not something that INEC needs to, to uh, make a case out of. All that INEC needs to do is to explain that, you see, I want to move these books into the house, you know, and my staff are not enough. So I need more hands to help me move the books into the house. So it's like a little job, you know, and once they finish moving that book, those books into the house, there is no other job for them to do for the next four years before the books come again. So there's no way I can retain you as full-time staff. You know, so guys, those of you that want to help me move this book into the house and be paid this over this period of three months, please come. But after that, please know that it is I engage staff on project basis. There are some qualities of staff that I need. I cannot maintain them as full-time staff. So when I have certain types of jobs, I, I, I open it up. The industry practitioners, they know about it. They say, okay. And we say it is project specific. This renovation, I'm going to do it in six months. After that, we will disengage for this period. Now you pay them more than you pay the regular staff because you know that some of them are going to leave what they were doing to come and do this and may, may not be able to go back. So you, they get a little sweetener and things like that. So it's not something that should come into national discourse. It's something that INEC needs to give you an explanation and not to say youth are not willing to. Now that's, that's they're not totally true. Youth are not willing to because number one, you've got to pay them and you don't pay them well. Look at that history. Youth also want to be safe and that is not within your own purview. I understand that. That's not INEX, um, you know, business to create a safe environment. That's for the police. And then um, sometimes that's primarily for the police because internal. But these days we've learned to bring every other person. Well, civil defense, then the vigilante, they can be part of it. But bringing the army is a different kettle of fish altogether. I look forward to that time during election where election seekers, people who are seeking public office, they see service as the motivation for seeking public office and not power. And as a result, there will be people that will need to be the ones to beg them to come and, you know, be there because they know that it's going to be sacrificed. I will end on what my brother, distinguished Senator Udo Udama said. He blew my mind and I continue to respect him no end. He said, Ezekiel... I've come out poorer than I was because that man has a policy. You know, they take bribe. 
you know they do all the mm, strictly professional 100 percent professional so the, what you get as a minister cannot take care of what you at the end of one year what you get as a minister is less than what you get for one month it's like me now he said come and be minister live on your uh, uh, uh wages my one year salary probably is just the one month of travels you know expenses that i make as are today you know so because it's a sacrifice we'll now be looking for people that we are begging them to come and then those people will now no longer need to kill to get into office so we start to have elections where people just know that i mean there's no fight no quarrel and even on election days there'll be work days we introduce technology and then people get in get elected when they think they failed they will even bow out honorably or like me my brother uh, distinguished senator Udaudama, he says one session was good enough for me i've given that let me go back and mind my business so that i will not go bankrupt and if in the future he can afford to give time full time to do another thing within what is possible for him he will do that service i'll end on this note service must become the essence for our seeking public office when that is done we'll start to have election where it is no longer a do or die and then we don't have police and soldiers coming in to beat people to line and then nigeria will start to have the right people in the offices to manage our common patrimony Okay, we would like to thank you, uh, architect Ezekiel Nyaitok, uh, for coming on the show. It's always uh, fun to have you on set with us. Thank you so much for your time this morning. That's because you get me talking. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. So All right. Uh, we'll be talking with architect Ezekiel Nyaitok, a public affairs analyst in a quiet bomb state who also contested as um, a governorship uh, candidate in a quiet bomb state. His case is still in court, even though it's been struck, struck out from the tribunal or at the tribunal. Uh, from what he has said, he's going to appeal it, he's going to the Supreme Court or wherever it takes him. Uh, we'll see how that unfolds, but we'll also uh, be bringing you details of uh, that uh, happening, whatever uh, the process is going to be like. Well, as we wrap up on uh, this segment of the show, we'll go, we're going to take a break, and when we return, we'll go into other matters. Stay with us. <music>